Okay, so now I'm going to do my guitar rig from late 1988, early 1989, um, when I uh, started saving my money so I could buy an amp, get away from that PV Special 130 and all that stuff. and um, So I was saving up my money and I was always looking at those old carbon catalogs and said someday I'm going to have me a carbon stack and get me a custom built carbon guitar and this is my carbon X100B stack that I bought in I'd say later 1988. I think I bought the the bottom cabinet and the head first and then later in 89 I got the top cabinet. Um, it's got the carbon high energy 12 inch speakers. I, I didn't go with the selections. They're 150 watt speakers. So um, it has a different sound. Uh, I'll play that later. Um, yeah, it's been to hell and back, but it's survived for that many years. It was my main amp for all that whole time. Um, I mainly use the bottom cabinet. I took, I think two times I tried to play through the whole stack when I was in the band Lethal Dose. We played at a park in Isla Vista and, uh, but we had to unplug the top cabinets cause it was too loud for the drums and we, we weren't micing any of the stuff. It was just, I don't know, the, those days it was, you know, we had no monitors or nothing. It was just our amps and the drums and what we got is what we got and a PA only for the vocals. So I think we just played through bottom. And then when I was in the band ritual, the second, the second ritual, we played a smaller club and me and the other guitar player, we we were playing through the full stacks because everything was mic'd and uh, we thought it was okay. But then later the sound guy came and told us to unplug the top cabinet that it was, it was too much. So uh, I guess buying a full stack was overkill, but hey, that was back then. You had to look cool, have a full stack, even though I've, I only got to use it for five minutes as a full stack and most of the time I just played through the bottom cabinet and uh, shoot even with the full stack I think I never did the volume past three or four um, they were so damn loud um, but that's pretty much it I'm gonna get rid of this cabinet put the head down here and play it the way I used to play it and we'll give it a try Okay, so the first guitar I got when I, I wanted to get from the carbon catalog, so I got I got this guitar custom made, uh, the DC-125, they normally came with just one pickup in the bridge, and I wanted the option to have the neck pickup and the little switch um, and a tone control. So I put this on order in pearl white. Um, it's got the Jackson style from I believe 88 or 89, I don't remember. And when I had it on order, the guys at Carbon were super cool. They called me up and said, Hey, we got a um, we got the same exact guitar that you ordered, hasn't been painted yet. Uh, one of the guys, somebody that had ordered a custom guitar, had basically the same guitar, but he had block abalone inlays I had dots so they said if you want we'll give you that guitar we won't charge you for the block inlays and that was a, a pretty big markup having the abalone blocks so I said yeah that's fine um, so they, they threw the block block uh, abalone inlays for free and then a little while later I got the guitar I used this guitar for you know quite a while and uh, you know it's my favorite guitar for a long time. Um, when I was playing in Ritual the second time, the other guitar player David, I let him use use this guitar while we we're in the band, and he used this one for pretty much the whole time we had uh, Ritual going the second time. And then my other guitar. 
So a little shortly after I had purchased this, my Charvel Model 5, at one time it was white. It's now it's, you know, yellow because we played a lot of outdoor shows. So it is no longer white. Um, this guitar has a pretty funny history. So I got this one and this, this ended up being my main guitar for probably until 2000. Uh, I just, I love this guitar. This guitar is awesome. Um, it's got the J80C pickups with the, I believe the JE1200 Active Electronics. The Jackson Bridge I had to replace. Um, it had an incident, so I got a, a German-made Floyd Rose original and a D-tune on. Then I have it blocked. Um, neck through. Um, yeah, if you ever have a chance to get or play a Model 5 Charvel, they're awesome guitars, super nice. Um, but this guitar, when I was in Lethal Dose, we we got called to play uh, a house party in Isla Vista, California. So we loaded up, we went out there, and we didn't know there was a, a noise abatement, like a curfew law for noise. So when we showed up, I guess the band that played before us had already been warned, and the guy in the house already been warned to not play past 10 o'clock. We showed up at around 9.45. Um, we started playing and Lethal Dose was just thrash, noisy thrash band. I mean, loud, fast, just not friendly music. Um, so I think we got about three songs into the set and then my guitar cut out. So I was like, oh, what the hell? So I reached back to see what's going on, you know, checking everything. I reached my arm out and bam, handcuff. And I was like, what the hell? Um, so then we we got arrested for noise abatement law for violating the curfew had no idea um i still had my guitar hanging around my neck i was handcuffed and i was asking the officer can i can i put my guitar down and he's like no i'll do it for you and then i was like tell him take take the bar off the tremolo take he was just like you know wasn't listening i was like okay whatever so he puts the guitar in the case with the bar still on there just jams the thing shut and i was like oh crap um and then my brother was a singer for Lethal Dose, and he just dropped the mic blend into the crowd and got away. So me, the drummer, the other guitar player, and the bass player, you know, we're crammed in the back of this uh, sheriff's car. It was pretty funny. Um, and then, you know, they took us to the to the foot patrol station in Isla Vista. And, you know, there were already so many people because everybody's partying. And so they, they handcuffed me to a bench in front of the foot patrol station. There's some drunk girl off the side you <laughs> look like she's gonna throw up and i'm like you know trying to hold her away from me because i thought she was gonna puke on me and the windows i'm like hey let, let me get me out of here this crazy bitch is gonna puke on me and uh they're like we'll get to you in a minute and i'm like oh man and then my brother he he comes walking by and he, he laughs at me because i'm freaking sitting on the handcuff to the bench next to a drunk girl looks like she's gonna throw up on me um so we get all that squared away and then I didn't get my guitar back there holding it as evidence and uh, you know so later we we did all the court stuff for the noise and I just wanted to plead guilty pay 75 bucks and we're done but Lynn and Steve the other guys are like no we're not we're gonna fight it and I was like whatever so we go to court and that was a nightmare um the bass player Lynn you know when we're we're in court you know he's freaking out the you know the sheriff's doing his thing up on there and he stands up in the middle you fucking liar and i was like oh we're going to jail and then uh so he kept outbursts and then uh the judge is like one more thing and you guys you know and i was like you know whatever okay I, you know i didn't want i just wanted it done um so at the end they say any last words and i said yeah can i have another trial by myself without these idiots and uh he just no shook his head and he's just like so we ended up Instead of just paying a $75 fine, we end up paying like $150 and get a year probation. And if we broke the uh, probation, we'd end up going to jail for who knows how long. So, you know, I paid my money, had probation for uh, disturbing the peace because of playing a stupid band. And uh, got through all that. And then uh, I was only I actually only played in Lethal Dose for four or five months. Um, their guitar player... He, Joey, he, he left. Um, so there was an issue there with something. I'm not going to get into that, but he left. So my brother asked if I'd fill in. I was, you know, the condemned 
we were going through drummers and it wasn't going too good. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll play for you guys for a while. So I played with them for a while. Most trouble I ever got into my life. Uh, it, being in that band was just crazy. Um, so I was only in, in that band for, you know, four or five months. Uh, played a bunch of shows with them. It was pretty fun. And then uh, went back and did the Condemned. We, we figured out our drummer situation and all that stuff. And so I went back to that. And then... Uh, So my carving through my, when we did, when I got this, I was still in the condemned and our drummer Jason was still in town and we we're, you know, still trying to come up with songs, um, before I ended up going to lethal dose, but this, this is how this amp sounds and it's all stock. Um. <laughs> that Sato had wrote for the Condemned. Uh, and we started getting away from, you know, the punk rock stuff and getting, trying to get more towards eh, crossover, thrash metal, speed metal type of stuff, that late 80s type of stuff. And this amp, I, I never used a boost. I, it has an EQ and I always, this is without the EQ. <laughs> I guess the EQ kind of has a boost, but it had pretty good gain. I never, I never had to use a boost pedal in front of it in the type of music. I didn't care if it had the flubby sound, but it worked pretty decent for me. my Charvel pots are a little scratchy um yeah this one i used in condemned lethal dose and ritual one and ritual two like i said this was my favorite guitar i loved this guitar <laughs> ritual song yeah this um, this was uh, the sound that pretty much the whole time this was my combo that I used um, I have one other guitar that I got in 1990 ish 90 91 um, <laughs>
and then so the other guitar that I had for uh, pretty much just used in Ritual was my Jackson uh, Professional made in Japan. It had Jackson pickups, it had the J50 pickup and the J200s. I still have those with the J1200 Active Electronics. I take I have EMGs. I have EMG SAs here, EMG 85 in the bridge. Um, and then I just kept all the jacks and stuff in a box so later I can put it back in. This is a great guitar too. Um, I like the old jacks. It kind of reminds me of the, the Charvel Model 6, but in the Jackson. And I use this off and on in Ritual. Um, I think uh, I lended out some people. I think uh, Greg, who was in Ritual, I condemned with me and actually did some singing on my latest project, but I let I let him use this, and I think one one of the bands he's in, I don't remember, but you know I would loan my guitars to people and let them play if they didn't have a guitar. But this is how this guy sounds. Out of tune, that's how it sounds. attitude but yeah this was my my Jackson um, pretty good condition because the I didn't I didn't use it as much but uh, it's fun guitar Thank <laughs> you. 